Hello, welcome to the PARS Health TV channel. We hope you're having a good day and you are happy and healthy. In this channel, we give you tips to keep you healthy and out of trouble. In this video, we want to talk about how to save someone's life using CPR. This video is for educational purposes only and if you have any specific condition or illness, you should consult with your doctor. It's terrible to imagine, but what would you do if someone in your home suddenly collapsed and stopped breathing? After calling 911, most people feel helpless after witnessing such an event, which is usually due to a cardiac arrest. But anyone can learn cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, and everyone should. And because 4 out of every 5 cardiac arrests happen at home, the life you save is likely to be someone you love. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR for short, is often a life-saving measure for those suffering from cardiac arrest. To review, cardiac arrest is defined as an electrical malfunction in the heart that causes an irregular heartbeat and disrupts the flow of blood to the brain, lungs, and other organs. As of 2018, cardiac arrest is among the leading causes of death in the United States. According to the American Heart Association, if CPR is performed in the first few minutes of cardiac arrest, it can double or triple a person's chance of survival. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, is a life-saving technique that's useful in many emergencies, such as a heart attack or near drowning, in which someone's breathing or heartbeat has stopped. If you're afraid to do CPR or unsure how to perform CPR correctly, know that it's always better to try than to do nothing at all. The difference between doing something and doing nothing could be someone's life. If you like topics like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to see daily videos just like this one. Alright, let's get started. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, can help save a life during a cardiac or breathing emergency. However, even after training, remembering the CPR steps and administering them correctly can be a challenge. The basic steps of CPR CPR is most successful when administered as quickly as possible. It should only be performed when a person shows no signs of life or when they are unconscious, unresponsive, not breathing or not breathing normally, in cardiac arrest, some people will take occasional gasping breaths, they still need CPR at this point. Don't wait until they are not breathing at all. It is not essential to search for a pulse when a person is found with no signs of life. It can be difficult to find a person's pulse sometimes and time can be wasted searching. If CPR is necessary, it must be started without delay. The basic steps for performing CPR can be used for adults, children, and infants. This information is only a guide and not a substitute for attending a CPR course. The basic steps are D. Dangers R. Response S. Send for help A. Open airway B. Normal breathing C. Start CPR D. Attach defibrillator, ED 1. Dangers Check for dangers Consider why the person appears to be in trouble, is their gas present or have they been electrocuted? Might they be drunk or drug affected and consequently a hazard to you? Approach with care and do not put yourself in danger. If the person is in a hazardous area, such as on a road, it is okay to move them as gently as possible to protect both you and their safety. 2. Response Look for a response. Is the victim conscious? Gently shake them and shout at them, as if you are trying to wake them up. If there is no response, get help. 3. Send for help. Dial 911 ask for an ambulance. 4. Open the airway. Check the airway. It is reasonable to gently roll the person on their back if you need to. Gently tilt their head back, open their mouth and look inside. If fluid and foreign matter are present, gently roll them onto their side. Tilt their head back, open their mouth and very quickly remove any foreign matter, for example, chewing gum, false teeth, vomit. It is important not to spend much time doing this, as performing CPR is the priority. Chest compressions can help to push foreign material back out of the upper airway. 5. Normal breathing? Check for breathing, look, listen, and feel for signs of breathing. If the person is breathing normally, roll them onto their side. If they are not breathing, or not breathing normally, go to step 6. 
the person in cardiac arrest may make occasional grunting or snoring attempts to breathe, and this is not normal breathing. If unsure of whether a person is breathing normally, start CPR as per step 6. 6. Start CPR. Cardiac compressions. Place the heel of one hand on the lower half of the person's breastbone. Place the other hand on top of your first hand, and either grasp your wrist or interlock your fingers, depending on what is comfortable for you. The depth of compression should be one-third of the chest depth of the person. The rate is either, 30 compressions to 2 breaths, mouth to mouth as per step 7, aiming for 100 compressions, and no more than 8 breaths per minute, or. If unwilling to do mouth to mouth, perform continuous compressions at a rate of approximately 100 per minute. Sometimes, people will have their ribs broken by chest compressions. This is still better than the alternative of not receiving CPR. If it occurs, pause and reposition your hands before continuing. Chest compressions are tiring and fatigue will affect the quality. If any other rescuers are available and willing to assist, rotate the person performing compressions every two minutes, even if you don't feel tired yet. 7. Mouth to mouth. If the person is not breathing normally, make sure they are lying on their back on a firm surface and open the airway by tilting the head back and lifting their chin. Close their nostrils with your finger and thumb. Put your mouth over the person's mouth and blow into their mouth. Give two full breaths to the person. This is called rescue breathing. Make sure there is no air leak and the chest is rising and falling. If their chest does not rise and fall, check that you're tilting their head back, pinching their nostrils tightly, and sealing your mouth to theirs. If still no luck, check their airway again for any obstruction. If you cannot get air into their lungs, go back to chest compressions. If there is airway obstruction, compressions may help shift the object. Continue CPR, repeating the cycle of 30 compressions then 2 breaths until professional help arrives. Chest compressions are tiring and fatigue will affect the quality. If any other rescuers are available and willing to assist, rotate the person performing compressions every 2 minutes, even if you don't feel tired yet. 8. Attach an automated external defibrillator, AED, as soon as one becomes available. Only use an adult AED on any person over the age of 8 years, who is unresponsive and not breathing normally. For children under the age of 8, ideally, a pediatric AED and pads should be used. Devices differ and instructions should be followed in each instance. CPR must be continued until the AED is turned on and then the pads are attached. Place pads following the diagram instructions on the pads. Pad to skin contact is important for successful defibrillation. Remove any medication pads, excess moisture, or excessive chest hair, if this can be done with minimum delay. It is important to follow the prompts on the AED. Do not touch the victim during analysis or shock delivery. If the heart stops pumping, it is known as a cardiac arrest. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, is a combination of techniques, including chest compressions, designed to pump the heart to get the blood circulating and deliver oxygen to the brain until definitive treatment can stimulate the heart to start working again. When a person experiences cardiac arrest, their survival often depends on someone nearby administering CPR. If you are interested in videos like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We hope you have a wonderful day. See you in the next video.